You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? Hey, are you guys ready for another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast? I am always ready. I am in love with this. I am in love. I just don't know any other way to explain it but being in love with recording and coming to you every week to have these conversations and give all these aha moments that I'm getting in this book. So far, I had like three people order this book and that hit me up and let me know, girl, I'm so happy you put me on. There's a link um, that our on our Instagram where you can go to the LinkedIn, the link tree and click on that to order the book from Amazon, as well as I'll have it in the show notes for the pod. And also I will have it on the YouTube channel and the note section, um, the show description on there as well. Okay. So let's just get into it. First and foremost, crew, what up? What's good? How are you all really feeling? Okay. Like I always say, if you can't keep it real with yourself, you're not going to be able to keep it real with nobody else. And it's okay to have those days where you feeling, uh, I'm feeling so, so not overly motivated. That is fine. A little bit. (laughs) I feel like you should be motivated about life every day, specifically if you feel like you're not in the spot or where you want to be in life. You should be motivated to get up every day. Do we have those days where we just don't feel like it? We all get there. And when you feel like that, just come on over. Listen to the Crew Book Club podcast and get you out your funk so you can think, so you can, can continue to push forward to be a better you. All right? So after you leave this podcast, I'm hoping you feel fired up and motivated and ready to go. Okay? All right, so I'm feeling good. I'm just ready to hop into this episode. So let's get into the who gonna check me, boo. God is, and God is always checking us. We love a good chizek. You know, um, whenever I go to church, I literally take notes. I love taking notes in church. I even take notes when I'm watching a sermon online (laughs) because it's good to have those references where you can go back and read those pinpoints that touch you. And I went back and looked at a sermon that was preached in November of last year by my pastor, Tim Timberlake at Celebration Church. And the title of the message was, I Hear You. You can literally go to YouTube and type it in, but I'll put it in the show notes as well. And the scripture comes from Matthew 9, 28 through 30. They went right into the house where he was staying and Jesus asked them, do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him we do. Then he touched their their eyes and said because of your faith it will happen then their eyes were open and they could see Jesus sternly warned them don't tell anyone about this now my pastor preached this word okay but the key notes that I got from it was God honors intuitive, not intentions listen intuitive is a power or opportunity to act or take charge before others do. Intention is your goal or purpose to aim is your intention. It's something you mean to do, whether you pull it off or not. But I liked how he was just like, stop saying you believe in something you are not pursuing. (laughs) This dropped bombs on me. And this is literally the time right before I decided to do the podcast. I mean, really like put my effort into it. And when he said that, I was just like, I believe in me and sharing these aha moments, but am I really pursuing it? And doing that, that sermon, that's when I was just like, I got to do it. I got to do it. And I literally launched that, um, that following month and started doing the research. He also was like, the eyes of my heart give vision. And I had the vision for the podcast, um, the beginning of 2021. And I was just like, girl, you can't wait no longer. Like you got to believe in that thing. And he also made a good point was I will not walk away from the vision. I believe this will happen. Okay. And y'all for me, it's like, it's happening. I may not be making a lot of money from this, (laughs) no money right now, but I just believe like 
God is positioning me to be here for the people and to do what he's asked of me to do, whether I make money or not, that's what I'm happy about. I'm happy about doing it because he asked of me to do it. And me doing what he asked of me to do, all my needs going to be provided for. Okay, so (laughs) I really love that that sermon resonated with me still again. And if you want to check out the sermon, I'll drop it in the show notes as well for you to tune into it as well. So let's get into the crew love because that was some really good who gonna check me boo God is. But, you know, I need some crew love, y'all. You know, right now, while y'all listening, go ahead and write a review on the Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to do that right now while you're listening to me. Leave a five-star rating. For my YouTubers, hit that follow button as well and share it with your friends and all of that. And if you're listening on any other podcast format, if you can leave a review, leave one there as well. All right. So, you know, this book is actually on Audible. I checked and we are partnered with Audible. So you can get your 30 day experience free with Audible with the Crew Book Club. If you just go to audibletrial.com slash crew love, that's audible, T-R-A-I-L.com slash crew love. That link will be in the show notes as well. It's free. You, you I mean, come on, y'all. If you like what I'm saying about the book, and you like, well, I ain't got time to really read the book, but I'm liking what you're saying. Go ahead. It's free. It's an app. Download it. Click the link. Download it so you can listen to it while you're in the car. And I promise you, you're going to be like, okay, I need the book. And then when you want to buy the book, you go to, you come back to the page. You hit that Amazon link so you can buy the book as well. Okay. I'll have all of that in the show notes for you. All right. Let's wait no longer and get into the book. We're going to start off with chapter five. What boundary violations look like? The author made it very clear. People do not have to like, agree with, or understand your boundaries to respect them. (laughs) Talk about it. (laughs) Listen, she does get into some micro boundary violations and Marco violations, which are on page 80 through 81 if you have the book. And she mentions some microaggressions are examples of racism, body shaming, gender biases and things of that nature but I really liked her focus on gender bias I want to talk about that a little bit and it's on page 80 it's on page 83 because I feel like I deal with this and you might deal with this as well um she gives the example of Tina being a CEO of her company and often receives the label as bossy while male counterparts are described as influential leaders Underlying issue, belief that women in powerful positions have attitude problems. Woo-hoo. Women, okay. But me being a black woman, I'm getting the racism. I'm getting the, oh, the black the black woman got an attitude. But no, it's just like, I'm being assertive. I am being assertive. I'm telling you what I want. I'm showing that I can lead. And you're going to respect me. Put some respect on my name. Okay. She says one of the suggestions for more appropriate behavior would be when others call her bossy, Tina could point out that she's simply assertive and willing to lead. Yes, we're going to call it out. We're not just going to sit there and let people walk over us and say, oh, you're being bossy. You're being. I said, no, I'm actually being assertive because I want to show you that I'm willing to lead. (laughs) <laughs> imagine saying that and looking somebody in the eye they're gonna be like okay with a little firm handshake with a little firm stare and the, look them right in the eye and be like I am being assertive and I'm showing you that I can lead mm, tell them girl tell them girl go ahead and try that <laughs> but I love that um on the last episode we I was telling you someone had submitted a question about guilt I want to talk about guilt tripping tripping Gosh, y'all, I'm tall, tired today. Okay, I want to talk about guilt tripping. I'm literally tripping on my words. <laughs> guilt tripping on exam on page 85. Okay, it says, y'all, I literally have to laugh at myself. Okay, so when someone intentionally tries to make you feel bad, they are guilt tripping you. Guilt tripping is a manipulative strategy that people use to persuade you to do what they want. I feel like we all kind of recognize guilt tripping, but we are quiet about it. And in the book, she talks about, no, we need to call it out. Because if you call a person out, they're going to catch themselves 
if they, when they do it again. And they're going to realize, oh, I can't try that on you because it ain't going to work. Boo-boo. Okay? So I like how she gave examples of guilt tripping, and which is ending toxic relationships, lacking interest in relationship with certain people, or being particular about what you like and not people pleasing others, and saying no without giving an explanation. I want to read a little bit about the not pleasing others and saying no without giving an explanation. She gives this example. Carla was at a reunion lunch with friends from high school and said, I don't want to get married or have kids. Her friend Pat said, everybody should have kids. Why wouldn't you want to get married? You're so nice. Underlying issue, Pat needed my her business. <laughs> <laughs> but the author says Pat tried to impose her values on Carla. Yeah, like, mind your business, Pat. <laughs> I don't know who your Pat is, but you need to tell them to mind their business. I was having this conversation with a friend the other day, and she was like, with her man, when they when people start coming at them about that, he started putting his hand out and be like, okay, you got the money to pay for this? <laughs> I love that because people be so quick to impose their values and their decisions onto you, but then don't want to cut the coin or be there because they're not living your life. So I like the whole, the not pleasing the other example on the whole guilt trip. Another one, the saying no without giving an explanation. And this is the example that she gave, but you can totally plug your own story. She says, a friend asks you, hey, can you help me move? Your response is no. Your friend says, why not? I need your help. There are times when it's okay to explain. Just be mindful of how the person has responded in the past to your explanations. If they accepted the explanation and moved on, go ahead and offer a brief reason. If explaining created a disagreement, keep your response brief. Underlying issue, the author says, people want you to have a reason they perceive as valid. Oh, have you ever been in that situation where it's like, no matter what you say, they're going to be like, nah, that ain't true. That ain't true. How you going to tell me what's in my brain and what I feel is to be true? Like, <laughs> you crossing the boundary line on that. She, she says, people who guilt trip are trying to get their needs met, but their needs may violate the requirements you have for yourself. For yourself. Key key yourself all right these are some ways to handle guilt tripping i love how she gives us little quotes that we can actually use one call it out are you trying to make me feel bad about my decisions two make the conversation about you not them it's nothing personal i just have preferences for myself three declare that you've made a decision quote your response seems like you're trying to change my mind quote and end it don't say nothing else more than that what's somebody gonna respond to that i prefer the awkward pause i didn't gotta explain myself to you you know what i'm saying now there's certain people i will explain myself to because like she said some of my friends they're worth explaining the response to because i love them enough and i want them to understand it's not me ignoring you and a lot of them be like okay cool Shade, i understand because they know my intentions are good right so i really love those examples and everything and she dives into a micro um aggressions and mark sorry y'all macro we just discussed micro we're gonna discuss some macro big mac truck <laughs> I don't know why I just said that, but that's the emphasis I want you like big things that can, can affect like our personal relationships, like our family and our friends that significant others that we deal with on a regular basis. And some of those are enmeshments, codependencies, counterdependency and trauma bonding. And those start on page 87. And I really want to focus on the examples that she gave for what codependency look like. She gives an example of 13, but I'm going to give you the top ones that stood out to me. Cleaning up the mess that others created for themselves. Making excuses for poor behavior of others. Tending to other people's needs and neglecting your own. Doing things for people instead of helping them do things for themselves troubleshooting problems for others before thinking of your own issues and having one-sided relationships. Mm, I've seen all of those. Listen, she gives us some boundaries um, of codependency that can help us. And 
there's nine of them, but I'm going to give you the top four that I read. It was like that stood out to me. It said, wait for people to ask for help instead of offering before they ask. I had a horrible time doing this because people would guilt trip me or like, I ain't going to say it's a guilt trip. It's kind of like passive aggressiveness, kind of like say what they're going through and, and insinuating, hoping that you do something about it. And then I would go, my gullible behind would be like, oh, well, I could do this. I could do this. Would that make you feel better? And it's like, and, and half the time, y'all ain't even want to do it. <laughs> I did it. But now I'm learning how to ask myself that question. Okay, what is my intention of doing this? I'm not, am I'm doing this because I want to do this or am I doing this because they're making me feel bad about not doing it? The other one was honor your commitment to yourself about what you will and will not tolerate in relationships. This is one of those things where make your known, like make it known what you will and will not tolerate. And then when someone crosses that, be like, I'm not tolerating that and I'm moving on. Do not come at me again with this mess because this is not what I'm willing to tolerate. <laughs> I don't know if you should say it exactly like that, but I'm just saying I'm going to let it be known I ain't tolerating it, okay? Another one is take care of yourself. Hmm. There's been times where in the past, and I think I did this one time, where I loaned someone some money, and it was probably in college. Yeah, no, it was in college. I remember. I loaned someone some money, and I needed the money, right? You think I saw that money back? No. And from that point forward, I realized i not loaning unless I can afford to lose it. And that's that because that way I'm taking care of my business first. I'm not going in debt. I'm not missing a bill for nobody. Me first. Okay. Um, and also help while teaching people how to help themselves. I can't think of the saying right now, but it's kind of like, let me teach you how to fish so you can catch your own fish and you're not coming to me asking for my fish. I'm fishing for my fish. I'm doing the hard work for my fish. Okay. <laughs> this is not... No, we need to teach people how to handle themselves. And sometimes we have to let people fail. Sometimes we got to take a step back, let that person fall on their face, and then they're going to come back and be like, all right, I get it. I apologize. Or moving forward, I'm going to respect your boundaries, sis. Okay? <laughs> and then they'll appreciate the value that you bring to the relationship. So those were those really good clean keynotes in chapter five that really hit for me. She also talks about trauma bonding in chapter five, which I feel like is a big deal. I'ma just say these are some examples, you know, of trauma bonding so you can recognize them. Being made to believe that everything is your fault, gaslighting, um, breaking up and then going back to unhealthy relationships. Mm-hmm. Feeling like you can't get out of a toxic relationship, not telling others how you've been treated in a relationship because you fear they will see it as abuse. Trauma bonding. I feel like there is a thin line between not sharing your business with everybody. That's why I highly believe having a therapist, relationship with God, and then having those friends that you trust that you can have those relationships with where, you, where you're not being judged. But it also can be tormenting to have all those thoughts going on in your mind by yourself and feeling lonely and like you can't talk to people. You know what I'm saying? So you you got to do the work on self. Um, but yeah, those were some. Now, some boundaries for trauma bonding that you can set is stop people immediately when they say something mean or something that makes you feel uncomfortable tell them what you said makes me feel uncomfortable share your relationship issues only with people you trust i just said that and it also says act early when you notice a pattern forming and be clear about how you expect to be treated because like we said in the beginning of this book you have to make it very clear on what your boundaries are and how you want to be treated and then take action and making sure you're implementing your own boundaries. OK, so those were some really, really good ones. I mean, she deep dives into them. Like I said, I highly recommend getting the book because it is a complete game changer. It's a complete life changer. OK, you know, if we're struggling with these, like I said, 
therapy will help you having a therapist to talk to because like I said one of the signs that I had that I needed a therapist was definitely oversharing and having those counter dependency issues and I was just like I don't know how to get out of these relationships I don't know how to express myself in these boundaries like how do I do that and therapy really helps so I highly suggest it that's why I partner up with BetterHelp the sponsor of this episode with a special offer for the crew book club podcast listeners, you guys take full advantage, even if you just do it for the one month and you can use your health insurance payment card. You don't have to use your, your, your actual debit card money out of your budget. If you have a health, um, card you can use that to pay for that that's what I use um you get 10% off your first month of professional therapy with betterhelp.com slash cruel love that's better h-e-l-p.com slash cruel love the link will be in the show notes okay do not pass up this opportunity to just try therapy just give it a try and I'm telling you if it will change your life and if you don't like the therapist that they partner you with it's so easy to request another one be like okay drop like a hot toddy they won't be offended they just want you to get help I want you to get help (laughs) okay so let's get into chapter six identify and communicate your boundaries yes if we know what they look like we can communicate them better and she gets into that it's four ways to unsuccessfully communicate boundaries being passive letting it slide aggressive, being rigid, inflexible, and demanding about what you need. Demanding, like not in a caring way, like you demanding this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Okay, let's be more commanding than demanding. And I learned that from the book, (laughs) y'all. Three, manipulation, attempting to get your needs met. We talked about that. And then there's passive aggressiveness, which I feel like a lot of us suffer from. And I only saying a lot of us in seeing things on TV, myself, interacting with my friends, family, just co-workers, hearing it, colleagues. So let's talk about more about that passive aggressiveness and what's that look like when identifying um, unsuccessful ways of communicating that boundary. And passive aggressive is definitely one of them. That is a strong point. And that's on page one, honey. I need you to see how you make me feel. Oh, I feel like... If you didn't say you never said that or did an action like that, I'm going to just talk about cheating. You cheated. They cheated. So it's like, well, I need to cheat too so you can see how I feel. (laughs) No. (laughs) Wrong way. Wrong way. Or, well, they didn't call me and they were mean to me. So in return, I'm going to show them how that feel. Uh Uh-uh. That don't work. Mm Mm-mm. At all. Okay, it also says, I want you to see how upset you made me. You know, let's not do that. Let's figure out how to communicate and process that without being aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I was on the wrong thing. I'm sorry, y'all. That was aggressive. Sorry. Passive aggressive is on page. Yep, yep, yep. I messed up. So passive was on page 100. Passive aggressive. The problem is that people can't guess your needs based on our actions. Okay. Being indirect is counterproductive because our needs go unmet. This one only makes us more frustrated and overwhelmed in our interactions with others. If, like I said, if I start calling I used to think this way. Well, I'm going to stop calling them. And if I stop talking to them, they got to know what happened. It's like, no. Half the time when people do stuff to you, they're not intentionally doing it. It's like they don't even know. Because one, they're not educated on their behavior. Two, they're not in therapy. (laughs) Um, But also, I feel like people are just living. You know what I'm saying? And they're in their own world, in their own bubble. So a lot of people don't know intentionally that they're hurting you. So we have to be, um, we have to communicate, hey, you hurt me. This is how it made me feel. You know what I'm saying? Here's some other examples of passive aggressiveness. Appearing upset but refusing to admit it. Mm, We don't all have those. I mean, from mom friends to everything it's like is everything okay you good Mm -hmm, i'm good 
and obviously you are not <laughs> there clearly is the issue it's in your tone it's in your body it's in how you normally don't talk to me that way you know what i'm saying we gotta stop doing that you know making verbal attacks not related to current situation just out the blue you bringing up stuff from last year verbally attacking me and i'm just like wait this ain't got nothing to do what we're talking about because the last time you didn't make it clear what the issue is you know what i'm saying so i really love how she gives us examples of that and these are things we should not do so let's recognize when we're being passive aggressive y'all this is the way assertiveness assertiveness is the way on page 103 through 104 it talks about this assertiveness involves communicating your feelings openly and without attacking other it isn't demanding instead it's the way of commanding that people hear you saying no to anything you don't want to do telling people how you feel as a result of their behavior sharing your honest thoughts about your experiences communicate 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 huh Responding in the moment when it happens, say it, y'all. Let's call it out. Remember, we're calling it out to show them how they hurt us. Instead of talking to a third party, gossiping, talking directly to the person you have the issues with, making your expectations clear up front instead of assuming people will figure them out. What what they're saying? They're like, stop assuming. You make it an ass out of yourself. <laughs> That is so true. I've been in that assuming state. And a lot of times when we get into that assuming state, we get into that what if, what if, what if, what if. We come up with a whole story about what happened. It ain't even what happened. That's not even how that person feeling. Like you don't even know. So instead of going down that rabbit hole, that's going to make an ass out of yourself. Just go directly to the person, communicate and have the conversation. Point blank, period. Okay. Working on boundaries means always also working on your ability to be assertive. So let's practice being assertive. Okay. So now that we know those things, let's see how to successfully communicate a boundary on page 104. Step one, be clear. Do your best to be straightforward as possible. Mind your tone. Don't yell or whisper. Step two, Directly state your need of request or say no. <laughs> don't just mention why you don't like. Ask for what you need or want. Identify your expectations and decline the offer. Y'all, I'm really getting the understanding like communicating is key. Step number three, dealing with the discomfort that happens as a result of setting boundaries is the hardest part, y'all. We're going to be uncomfortable doing this. It says discomfort is the number one reason we want to bypass setting them. It's common afterward to feel guilty, afraid, sad, remorseful, and awkward. We don't have time to get into it, but in the book, she goes through each one of those on how to deal with it. And I'm going to save the guilt one because that was the what would the crew do question, ask advice. So we're going to come back and dive into that in that segment because one of our crew members had asked about that. All right. So let's understand Ways to communicate a boundary in a current relationship. Identify the errors which you need limits. State your needs clearly, y'all. And don't explain yourself to provide a detailed story about what's behind your request. Be consistent in upholding your boundary. Restate your needs when necessary. In new relationships, mention when you really want casual in the conversation as you're getting to know them. Have an open discussion about why having your needs met is important to you. Be clear about your expectations. The first time someone violates your boundaries, let them know that the violation has occurred. Restate your needs. I think that's the biggest thing in both new and old relationships. When we're changing, we have to constantly reinstate our needs because things change. And when people are used to you being a certain way, they think you new, new. And we are new, new because we are setting boundaries in our lifetime forever and moving forward. OK, I really love that. And she talks about acclimation and how you have to give people time to allocate to your new life. You know, everybody is like, oh, wait, we doing this now. So we have to give people time. Now, it's up to you how often and how much time you want to give that person but we have to give people time to allocate to our new way of living. Okay. So that was chapter six. 
you know, it's so much information, but I be trying to keep the podcast short for <laughs> short for y'all because I know our attention span can be very low. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> if you want to dive in and get the book, please, 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 please click on the Amazon link in the show notes in the description so you can order the book. I'm telling you guys, you will not be disappointed. This is a game life changer. Okay, so let's get into the challenge of the week. Woo! Last week's challenge was reclaim your time, right? This week, our challenge is stop the violators. <laughs> stop the violators okay that is the challenge of the week this week we stopping all violators right here and right now okay because we got that boundary saying lifestyle we ain't playing no games with y'all here's some quick tips of handling buyer violations on page 116 tip one <laughs> speak up in the moment simply say something like i don't like that say anything is better than saying nothing OK, because we don't want that resentment afterwards. And then you looking crazy two weeks later, y'all get in an argument and then you bringing up what you didn't like two weeks ago. I'm like, well, wait, what, what's going on in that moment? If you don't like it, just simply state, I don't like that. That doesn't make me feel good. You know what I'm saying? Tip number two, verbalize your boundaries with others. Do it organically in conversations such as I don't like when people come over without calling first. OK, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I do not like you, like you FaceTiming me until you text me first. <laughs> Are you ready to FaceTime? Can I FaceTime you? Do that first because if you just click that FaceTime button, I ain't going to answer. I'm going to decline and text you. I ain't ready for that. <laughs> Tip number three, if someone violates a boundary, you're already verbalized. Tell them how the violation makes you feel. Then reinstate what you expect okay tip number four don't let people slide not even once we aren't tolerating that because if you let them slide once it's like them inching in okay let me see what else i can get away with she ain't changed she ain't changed no we gotta uphold our own boundary setting okay so that was the challenge of the week stop the violators okay all right So let's get into what would the crew do? Ask advice. And this week it was from one of our crew members. It said, I've set my boundaries, but now I feel guilty because I'm not used to telling others no. How do I continue to stick with what I've set without going back to the old habits? Yes. So let's get into what I was talking about going back to on page 106. And she says in the book, there is no such thing as guilt free boundaries. Guilt is part of the process. Feel the guilt, but don't focus on it. Over focusing on emotions just prolongs them. You can carry on while feeling guilty. If you're feeling guilty, here are some reminders. It's healthy for you to have boundaries. Others have boundaries that you respect. Setting boundaries is a sign of healthy relationships. And if boundaries ruin a relationship, your relationship was on the cusp of ending anyway. If guilt is bothering you, engage in your favorite self-care practice and do a few grounding techniques such as meditation and yoga. Yes, I feel like we be feeling so guilty about setting boundaries, but other people be willing to tell us no. And say no. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think also for me, what has helped me personally is I know what, how happy I feel when I've set a boundary and stuck to it. And it's like, I want to continue to have that feeling. (laughs) And when it's dealing with loved ones, it's like, I want to continue to love you. So we have to have this boundary in place because if not, we're going to have bigger issues. (laughs) So I think that'll help you recognize keep you from going back and then what the author suggested is the guilt is going to be there the discomfort is going to be there but you do not sit in it and don't over focus on it so that was what would the crew do ask advice you can always dm at the crew book club on instagram you can go to the youtube put in the comment section and you can also email the crew book club at gmail.com if you want to ask some advice for You walk away, you know I got to give you the quote of the week. The quote of the week, I found online from an unknown author, but it was really good. It said, 
Stop asking why they keep doing it and start asking why you keep allowing it, okay? Listen, whoo, people will do only what you allow them to do, okay? Set the boundary, crew. I love y'all, and I will see y'all next week for another episode of the Crew Book Club Podcast. Hey! Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, we would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you. Thank you and welcome to the crew.